unkind. It's not because they were ungracious. They were simply trying to shield Jesus, to protect him from being overwhelmed. And Jesus was not very appreciative of it. He didn't want any part of it. And he looked at those 12 men and he said, let those children come to me. Well, one of the things that we have to see here is that at the very least, Jesus was indignant about it. At the most, I think he was angry about it at what was being done and what was not being done. And it's hard to imagine how he feels about children living here in 2024 and the problems that they face. You know, he would be angry at so many things like the rights of children denied the things that we all know and take for granted. Underprivileged kids who don't get what they need, period. He would be angry, I think, over the wimp acceptance of preventable poverty that concerns children condemns children not only to suffer, not just suffering, but to really a drying up of the soul. He would be angry over my tolerance and over your tolerance of the vicious forces that prey upon children. And that's not P-R-A-Y, that's P-R-E-Y. The forces that are looking at them with foul ideas. He would be angry that his own people, us, Grace St. Luke's, Iowa, Immaculate Conception, all Christians, we oftentimes are content to let it happen. Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. Many of us grew up learning that first verse out of the King James Version with this wonderful Elizabethan England, English, and it said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Now, we can easily escape condemning ourselves through that word forbid. Now, who would forbid a child's coming to Jesus? Not a one of us. And that word has a connotation of active obstruction of conscious obstruction, of deliberate obstruction, keeping them from coming to Jesus. But oftentimes that obstruction can be unconscious. It may come just simply from neglect to take a positive action. In our own homes, we don't mean to, but by our lifestyle today, we may stop children from coming. We can do it, not meaning to, by making Christ unattractive through our own example. We can do it by showing by the decisions we make that we don't consider Jesus very important. If we are worship on Sunday, that's okay. But if Missy is on a traveling soccer team, they're going to play soccer on Sunday. If my boys, my two grandsons here, have a swim meet in Huntsville, Alabama on Sunday, guess what? That's where they're going to be. I have three sets of traveling athletes. They miss church more than they are in church because of the programs that are now in place that totally disregard the church that we knew. Folks, what did we do when we were teenagers on Sunday? We went to church on Sunday morning. We went to Cairo or whatever youth group we went to on Sunday afternoon. And a lot of churches had Sunday night church. I was a Baptist. Who rate for Sunday afternoon and <laughs> Sunday night church? It didn't hurt me. I had to learn to live with it. You know, it's just that way. And if we are at worship on Sunday okay, if we're not okay, that impacts them. They see that. We can stop the children from coming to Jesus 
simply by neglecting and letting the world use their religious life. I want to close with a story that I find very good. And it's about a Christmas Eve children's service many years ago at a church in Decatur, Illinois. And the name of the church, John, you'll appreciate that, is Our Lady of Lourdes Catholic Church. And the priest on Christmas Eve, surrounded by about 100 kids up here on the altar, and he addressed the congregation that Christmas Eve as such. Christmas is the time to be thankful for the blessings of our lives. I'm thankful, he said, for two things. I'm thankful for all of these wonderful children with us here today. I love them all. They're very special. And then he looked at them and he said, I'm also thankful for the gift of celibacy. <laughs> so, as I started out the message, I said that I was thankful that I am not a child and I'm not going into the bit about celibacy. That's the priest's problem. Mm -hmm. But I'm thankful that there are Christian people who care enough about children to make them a priority and to help them through difficult years and particularly to those youngsters who are at risk. These are people who listen and respond when the Lord says, let the little children come unto me, do not hinder them. I know every one of us is thankful for the leadership that we got many years ago when Rachel and Harry began Rachel's Kids. We're, Rachel, we're glad that we have the opportunity, even to today, to help with that ministry. Not just giving money, but to encourage those people that work. Not by giving money and encouraging the people, but by praying for all of those who come in contact with those young ones. God is good, and He has set people like Rachel and the other people involved with Rachel Kids right in our midst to remind us that we have an obligation, yep. We have a responsibility, yep. But we also have a privilege. A privilege to serve God through helping the children of today. So once more, I read that scripture. Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them. And I ask you, and this is a stupid question because I'm going to answer it, are you one of them? Are you? And the answer you can say loudly and proudly, but not in a horrible, prideful way, but in humble pride. Yes, you are. You've heard me say, Central doesn't play church. Central is church, and I've stood before you for 12 years, and I've watched how wonderful it is, and I'm proud, how proud I am to be with you. So my message this morning is we're in uncertain times. We're not quite sure what's going on or what's going to happen, but I urge you, even in the uncertainty that envelops us, let's keep it up. We can be like that old cartoon character. Some, most of you will remember Michael, you never heard of him. Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse was this little bitty something, wasn't he? But he did absolutely amazing things. I think we ought to put a sign out on the church. Central Christian Church. We are Mighty Mouse. And I thank the Lord for you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.